Hey there everyone, Chris Kugler here. I uh, just wanted to take a quick look at something. Uh, recently I downloaded, I, I found a asset store seller that's got some models I like. Uh, this skeleton was one of them, which actually let me uh, jump in here in the scene view and get a bit of a closer look. And mainly this skeleton is the only monster they have, but what they have is a lot of humanoid characters that I like the quality of that kind of fits my um, the aesthetic I like and I'm going for. Uh, the main problem though that I ran into is their models don't seem to use the Mechanim animation system. It's still using all the the older legacy stuff for some reason. So what I've kind of done is I've got a new change to my animation controller system. And I've got a legacy animation controller set up. And it was, a, it was a little bit of a pain to get that going. It's been a solid, like, two years or so since I really looked at legacy animations. Like, you know, Mechanim is just so much easier to deal with with the animation controller and everything. But, you know, I, I did put together a quick little animation controller, and I want to go over that a little bit just for anyone that kind of finds themselves in the same pos uh, position where, you know, they've got this... Um, you know, no pun intended, they've got this skeletal structure that doesn't immediately fit the um, the rigging model for Mechanim Humanoid or or anything like that, and you're just quite not, maybe you're not experienced enough to jump into 3D Max or Blender and fix the skeleton, or, you know, maybe that's just more effort than you're willing to go to. Like, in my case, my game is um, not turn-based, but it's also not exactly, like, critical that my animations blend perfectly into each other and I have all this advanced inverse kinematics going on or anything like that. So I'm fine with having a little bit more stilted animation than maybe an Assassin's Creed or or something that's really going off of this going for this high quality uh that has this high quality threshold on its animations. So doing a legacy animation system that you know, deals with keyframes and things like that is, you know, perfectly fine. So with that kind of disclaimer being said, let's go ahead and just take a quick look at the code. Um, let's pop skeleton animation controller. So if you'll remember previously, we had our um, enemy animation controller. And it has a the movement controller, the battle behavior, and a reference to the enemy. And it hooks up a bunch of different events. And based on those events, it knows to start and stop certain animations. Right? If the battle battle behavior says to attack, it plays the attack animation. And then in our um, in our derived classes, we deal primarily with the names of specific animations to that model, and the um, animation parameters in Mechanim. Which I've recently learned about something called, I think it was called an animation override controller that will let me simplify this process a whole hell of a lot. So we'll see where I end up with that when I go to look into that a little bit further. I might end up collapsing a lot of these classes into just one class based on this particular enemy type. But for my new thing, I've got this legacy enemy animation controller that's an abstract base class. And I've also got a new abstract base class that I'm going to split off and use for my other animation controller, my Mechanum one, that has that same enemy movement controller stuff and hooks up to the events, because that turned into being a very common set of functionality that I want to persist with. So very much the same thing we just scrolled through. It's got the, um, the event hooks, the uh, calling of these you know, standard animations when these particular events occur as well as some abstract and virtual methods and properties to override. Now for my legacy animation controller, we've got our animation component, which if you're not familiar is this guy in Unity, where we've got the all the animation clips that are accessible to the controller, as well as a default animation and a you know, quick little checkbox here. Um, not quite sure about calling type, but play automatically will play the animation that's in here by default when the scene starts. And this is um, this correlates to the um, the animator object on the um, 
on the mechanism side of things. Um, where is it? This guy, the animator object, which has the um, animation controller as well as the avatar that it applies to. You know, things like that. Now for legacy animation, we've got a few different terms here, but it's still fairly simple, right? Just rather than running things by parameters like we do with Mechanim, we, um, we run things based on the animation name that we want to play. And there's a few things you can do, like uh, blending animations together and, um, you know, having animations only take part in based on particular transforms and its children. So if you have like a walking animation and you want the enemy to wave at the same time, you can play both those animations, but have the wave animation only take part in the upper body. You know, th things like that, but I don't really need to get into that for my usage. So if you do want to go into that, that's something that is offered. And I highly recommend before you go playing around with the legacy animation system, that you definitely read through the documentation on it because it can be a little tricky. I think it's called blend is the method. Yeah, and you give it a weight and fade length and some other stuff to get that to go. But for my intents and purposes, I primarily use the crossfade method. And crossfade will transition uh, somewhat seamlessly from the currently playing animation to the animation name that is provided. And to that end, um, well, I don't need it anymore, but I had a mechanism where I was tracking whether the animation was still playing, and then if it was finished, immediately going back to the idle animation. But there's another little thing I did to solve that problem, so we can forget that bit of code. So I've got two main methods here, play animation, which just Play, uh, crossfades into the target animation if it's not already playing, and play animation ping pong, which will play the animation once and then replay it backwards in reverse. And I'm not really using this anymore. At least, yeah, I'm not using it anymore. But it is something I was experimenting with because I was noticing a little jankiness with my take damage hit, or my take damage animation, where it wasn't quite getting back to the idle animation in a way that I wanted, but after finagling a few things with a crossfade, I was able to get it to work without doing this. But we'll review the code here for, you know, just for consistency's sake, uh, um, consistency's sake, rather, sorry. So we're taking in this animation name that we're going to play, and this, uh, whether we're returning to the idle or not afterwards, and this is a coroutine. So we're grabbing the animation state object for this animation, and we're changing the, we're making sure the speed is a whole number. And we're going to crossfade to that animation. Or rather, sorry, that it's a positive number. My bad. Now, we are going to play that animation with a crossfade. And then we yield return for the length of that animation. And then once that length is finished, we're now at the end of the animation. We set the normalized time to 1, which is essentially the timeline for the animation clip, 0 being the start and 1 being the end, so that we could set our character model to pose in a position at any point in time from 0 to 1 within the, the span of that animation. We also set the speed to be inverted, so we'll play the animation backwards, and when we do the second crossfade, it, the starting at normalized 1 and having that negative speed will play back to zero. And then we um, you know, do another yield return here. So then after that, we return back to the idle animation. Like I said, I ended up not really needing that or having to deal with it. But what I did end up doing for some of these here is, if you'll remember in our mechanism stuff, we have, um, or rather this guy, we have um, animations that run off of Boolean states where it's just playing that animation as long as that statement is true or false or whatever the scenario is. And we also have triggers, which are essentially a play this animation once and then move along into the next step of the animation cycle. So we get a similar mechanism here where there are certain animations like walking and running 
that we want to play the animation for and it's just going to keep cycling right and these are all primarily be set up as loop animations in the animation inspector window which i'll move to in another minute or so and if you remember play animation it just does it checks to see if that animation is not already playing and if it's not it does the crossfade into it the other thing here are these play once type of animations where we want to play the animation and then return back to idle. So we do our play animation with our crossfade like normal, and then we do this crossfade queued, which what this does is once this animation is done playing, it goes into its queue, grabs the next animation, and crossfades into that. So that's kind of important. That's, uh, that's really useful because that gets rid of our need to make these into coroutines and doing any kind of yield returns on the, on the length of the clip or anything like that. Because uh, this is played, is playing doesn't actually revert automatically or do anything if the clip has reached its end. It'll just always be true until another clip has been called uh, with a crossfade or with the um, dot play which just immediately snaps to that animation without doing the, uh, the seamless transition. Now, looking at the, um, at the model itself, uh, if I can remember where that is, Oh, I, I changed the code and it decided to throw a fit on me. Uh, that's right, models. Inside of here, we got our spooky skeleton. We got our skeleton mesh. You can see he has no avatar. His import is of animation type legacy. And we have our animation set, which has all of these keyframes on it. There it is. So you can see we've got like our, our idle animation, our, um, where'd it go? Hit. Hit animation, which I was mentioning before, had some issues with it snapping back and forth. Depending on the wrap mode that is defined here, you know, the, the bottom section being the section that actually determines the usage, it might play until the end and then do nothing. It might loop over and over. It might play and then play back in reverse. Or rather, sorry, once just plays to the end and then I think snaps back to the first frame. Clamp Forever will play all the way through and then stay at the end frame. Uh, in the case of animations where we want to loop, like our... Um, or our play die, for instance, will clamp forever because we want to stay at that last frame until the you know the enemy object is destroyed and the models return to the pool and all that good stuff. Idle is going to loop. Our attack is going to be a play once because we want to do it once and then we want to crossfade back into our idle for that looping state. So it's very important that you you know look through here and you just determine, hey, well, I want my attack to be once. And obviously I need to come back through here and change a lot of these other ones because they're loop. I only went and edited the ones that are actually being used by this model. You know, and then certain other things like fall, you want to have them fall down and that's it. Or idle, you want it to loop over and over and over. And that does, um, for the most part it's, part, it's not a huge limitation, but that does kind of lock you into this model only gets to operate in this one particular way because you have to set these things at the asset level. So you need to be sure that your code and your behavior all are consistent for every time you're using this model. So if you're, for instance, this package came with a lot of different skeleton types that have different weapons and armor and you know other effects and loadouts and things like that, they all kind of have to act in a very similar manner you know, with a attack that can't loop over and over, or they their fall animation can't be used to fall down and then get back right up away, or to ping pong back and forth, you need to do the 
you know, similar transition sets between them all. Which, like I said, for the most part, that's fine, but, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe there are circumstances in which you would want that to be different, in which case I guess you would just need to duplicate your animation objects and turn around and, um, you know, have different settings for each one and apply them to the individual model's uh, animation object. Might be a way to get around that. But either way, that's kind of our, you know, somewhat quick look at the legacy animation controller that I put together. So, you know, hopefully, as always, hopefully you gain something from that. And hopefully, unlike me, you're not stuck in a situation where you have to deal with it, because, boy, do I really prefer the Mechanim animation system. It is just so good. But anyways, uh, thank you for watching, and I will catch you all next time.